Lately, my social media and TikTok feeds have been going on nonstop about smiling friends. It's a relatively new show on Adult Swim and HBO Max that follows this charity organization focused on making people smile when they've got problems. It premiered back in 2022 and has taken the internet by storm. And personally, I love this show. I'm not usually a big fan of adult animation, really, but this show clicked with me instantly. And as it's just wrapped up its second season, it's been gaining popularity fast. But why? What's the deal with Smiling Friends? Well, uh, first we gotta take a look at where this show comes from. Hitting Adult Swim in January of 2022, Smiling Friends is the brainchild of Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack, two creators with long, long histories releasing animations on websites like Newgrounds and, of course, YouTube. In fact, a lot of you might recognize Zach as Psychic Pebbles, who's had a ton of viral animations on YouTube over the last, you know, decade plus, and has also been a co-host on the Let's Play channel Oni Plays for years. It's got pig physics. I can't play this game, it's freaking me out. It's got pig physics. In 1991, I told myself when they started putting pig physics, I'd stop playing games. <laughs> These guys have a very, uh, a particular sense of humor, super indicative of that old school internet era they came up in. It's that very intense, exaggerated, chaotic, vulgar, and violent style of 2000s internet humor. The kind of stuff we probably shouldn't have been watching when we were growing up, but that's kind of why we were watching it. These scrappy, wild west early days of online video have kind of become internet legend nearly two decades later, because it's the kind of stuff you just don't see as much of today due to YouTube being so advertiser friendly and there being very few viable alternatives. But one place where that kind of comedy still thrives is Adult Swim. Uh, for those of you who don't know, because cable TV is as alive and thriving as my pancreas, Adult Swim is a nighttime programming block on Cartoon Network that focuses on more mature shows. Growing up, this is where you'd find reruns of shows like Family Guy and King of the Hill, but it's also also been home to a lot of really iconic original comedy shows like Aqua Team Hunger Force, The Eric Andre Show, Robot Chicken, and eventually Rick and Morty. All of which are shows with that much edgier, more vulgar, crude, and chaotic sense of humor that you wouldn't typically find anywhere else on TV. And heck, even before Smiling Friends, Michael Cusack had another original animated series premiere on Adult Swim called YOLO that I'm pretty sure is still going today. And come one April Fool's Day 2020, Zack and Michael hopped on the Psychic Pebble YouTube channel for a live stream. And right as the clock struck midnight, they made a surprise announcement that their brand new pilot for a show called Smiling Friends was premiering on Adult Swim in like 15 minutes. The full season didn't premiere until almost two years later, but Smiling Friends was officially public. So what is it? You know, what's the show? Well, the show follows the charity group, the Smiling Friends, with our two main characters, Charlie and Pim, voiced by Zach and Michael, respectively. Pim is this tiny little hyperactive ball of optimism and joy, and Charlie is his more cynical and laid back friend. They also share their office with Alan, a tall red thing who's very dry, kind of grumpy, and enunciates his words very specifically. Plus, the little spitting lima bean who wears a wizard hat and talks gibberish, and their boss, who kind of flips between being super creepy, intensely violent, or just genuinely really cool and chill. As a comedy ensemble, these guys work really well together, all meshing in kind of their own disturbing way. And they all work together to make people smile, even in the face of a cruel and chaotic world that's always out to get them. And when I say cruel and chaotic, I ain't messing around. Smiling Friends has some of the most intense chaotic energy I have ever seen in a cartoon. Even just the opening theme song is this cacophony of blasting notes and drums that feels like it took the old Looney Tunes opening and played it on two times speed. And when that song's done, what comes next is a total crapshoot. It could be a nice, simple establishing shot of the Smiling Friends office, or... I... I don't have words to describe this. And just about every episode is gonna have at least one moment of pure sensory overload. Whether that's like 10 people arguing at once, a bunch of little weirdo creatures just running around, or just a full-on psychedelic drug trip. This show can go absolutely crazy, but you can't just have that all the time. In comedy, I see chaotic energy as like a balloon popping. But for the balloon to pop, you know, it has to at one point be intact. And for the pop to actually make an impact, it's gotta really take its time. So the crazy chaotic energy is only half the puzzle here. For every moment of pure unbridled chaos, there's just as many moments that are so quiet, so casual, and so unexceptional that it's almost more disturbing. The show likes to use this tone a lot, where it's just a couple characters in the middle of the craziest situation you could possibly imagine, just kinda talking 
like normal. It's uncomfortably down to earth, made even more real by the fact that these moments feel totally improvised. I mean, if you ever saw Zack on Oni Plays, you know this dude can drum up the most unhinged hypothetical, play it completely straight, and just go with it. Keeping a dumb as bricks improv bit going while being dead serious the whole time is nothing new to these guys. And it's such a great addition to the comedy in Smiling Friends. I mean, you know, I've seen improv in adult animation before, obviously in shows like Rick and Morty, but in that case, improv was normally used to add to the unpredictable energy of the show. Where here, it's more meant to be like a moment to breathe, despite still being some of the funniest stuff in the show. Now, characters will sit down and have conversations so mundane, or quiet arguments played so straight that you really can't help but laugh because it's just so uncomfortable. And also such a contrast to the insanity that could break out at literally any moment. Plus, the show really likes to kind of troll its audience too. I mean, the show had its first ever preview and premiere as an April Fool's joke. So clearly, Smiling Friends does like to mess with its audience expectations, even down to just the moment to moment story. A perfect example of the show's tendency to mess with its viewers is the special episode, Smiling Friends Go to Brazil. It sounds like a fun episode. It's kind of a change of pace story. What are these guys gonna get up to in Brazil? Brazil. Well, turns out, nothing. The episode is just 12 minutes straight of the guys hanging out in the airport in Brazil, realizing that no one booked the hotel and they just happened to arrive during Mardi Gras, so every place in town is booked, so there's nothing they can do. So this is just Charlie, Pim, Alan, and Glep trying to figure this all out. No cuts, no stunts, no music, no jokes, really. They play this 100% straight. The dialogue feels almost 100% improvised. And it's just like a very realistic depiction of getting stuck at the airport when your plans fall through. Even when they call their boss, he's suddenly this totally normal, pleasant sounding dude, completely out of character for him. Wait, you guys don't, need, you guys don't have a hotel? Okay, um, well, shoot, you chose the worst time to go. You chose the worst time to go. We know, no, no, we know. We know. Yeah. It's just too real, and I can't explain it, but it kills me every time. And the episode ends with them just leaving and heading back home. That's it. That's the episode. It is the most dull, down-to-earth thing, and yet it still feels so unhinged and uncomfortable that it becomes some of the funniest stuff I've seen on TV. And what really sells so much of this mix of, like, super mundane and super absurdist is the show's art style. You know, it kind of reminds me of The Amazing World of Gumball. Uh, hear me out. What I mean is that the show, while it does have a general art style, also takes just about every opportunity it can to branch out and mix in different stuff. Different art styles, different animation styles, different animation mediums, and sometimes just full-on live action. Kind of like how Gumball is also this big mishmash of different styles. I mean, don't get me wrong, the show definitely still has its own unique art direction. I mean, this cast of characters alone is instantly iconic and immediately recognizable. And if you've seen any of Michael or Zack's other work, then all of this just makes total sense. But the show clearly isn't satisfied with just that. And it's genuinely really fun how the show experiments with mixing in things like CGI, green screen, and even stop motion across various episodes. And I feel like this becomes even more common in the show's second season. I mean, just look at one of the more popular episodes right now, this is the real title, Brother's Egg. Just this episode alone has CGI, yeah, yes, we're back here again, get used to it, plus some guest animation work from Joel Haver, who's known for this like really unique rotoscoping animation. And all of that on top of the show's usual art style. Then one episode later, you have Charlie and Pim getting abducted by a couple of stop motion aliens. Then the episode after that, Pim and Mr. Boss go to Spamtopia, <laughs> which is this glitchy, unsettling, you know, Microsoft paint nightmare town. The creativity on show here when it comes to the art and animation is just really impressive. It keeps you on your toes just as much as the rest of the show. You know, there's actually a lot of stuff on Smiling Friends that I never thought I'd see on TV. This show loves its weird, obscure internet references. And I mean, obviously, this show is born of the classic Newgrounds days of Flash cartoons. That's evident in basically every aspect of the show. But for those who grew up spending way too much time on YouTube, like me, there is so much here. You got a main character who's voiced by the sick animations guy, a shrimp dude in one of the early episodes voiced by Salad Fingers, a cameo in the same episode from the Burger King foot lettuce guy, a cameo from the Nostalgia Critic. Anytime I tell someone about this, it breaks their brain. Now you got this thing from that viral video of 
this thing. Uh, the obscure, weird internet references are just everywhere. I mean, that whole episode, Brother's Egg, is referencing an old series of YouTube hoax videos where someone's trying to grow a weird living hybrid creature from an egg. You can hear Zach talking about it on Oni Plays years before the reference made its way to Smiling Friends. He cracks the egg in the video. He goes, oh, look at what we have here. He takes a piece of tweezers and he lifts it up. And the word goes, it spits at him. He <laughs> smashes it with a Bible and it explodes on the table. It's a real, it's a real video. You're a liar. Okay, that's you're, real. That's a right, real thing. You, that is a reference to a weird series of YouTube videos from 2015 that Zach talked about on YouTube in 2018, becoming a plot point in Smiling Friends and a surprisingly viral TikTok trend in 2024. That is how deep this stuff goes. And as a person who loves his internet history, it is just such a fun extra aspect to an already really engaging show. In fact, I think one of the big reasons this show has connected so well with the wide audience is because being created by two long running online content creators, the show was just genuinely genuinely and effortlessly in tune with internet culture. And not in that way of like, whoa, Charlie, your video's going viral. We're gonna be famous. Nah, none of that like really tired trope stuff. The show's not using internet culture or references to be cool or mainstream because Smiling Friends is in tune with internet culture in the same way that like your chronically online friends are. Referencing weird, obscure viral videos from 2007 that they found on a 3 a.m. YouTube rabbit hole spiral. And the show just does it for fun, and not for any like popularity points. And while all the things I've talked about so far do make Smiling Friends like a great and super unique show, I think the secret sauce is just that. Smiling Friends are just out here to have fun. You know, I wasn't really planning on making any videos about Smiling Friends originally. Like I said, I don't really tend to talk about adult animation a whole lot. And the reason is, I just kind of don't click with it most of the time. You know, I liked The Simpsons growing up, but I never really revisit it. I had a Family Guy phase, like we all did, but that didn't really last past high school. Uh, Rick and Morty lost its luster for me pretty fast, and I I've just never been a fan of South Park. I don't know, something about it just never hooks me. But I took to Smiling Friends right away, and the show's really only gotten better the more I watch it. And I couldn't quite put my finger on why, but then I got it. Smiling Friends is a deceptively wholesome show. Yeah, I think the reason those other adult animated shows lost my interest after a while was just, I don't like when shows are too mean-spirited, you know? I mean, a little mean-spiritedness in an edgy comedy show is natural and probably needed. But personally, a shows that really focus on that kind of energy get pretty exhausting to watch after a while. But Smiling Friends is a little different. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, Smiling Friends isn't like bluey or anything. It's still a horrifically vulgar show. The humor is dark, the imagery can be very intense, the subjects they tackle are very heavy, and it's a pretty violent show too. This thing earns its maturity rating. But at the heart of it all is a show that is actually kind of a feel-good time. I mean, it's right there in the name, Smiling Friends. The goal of the characters is to make people's lives better, to make them smile. So, you know, even if some of the characters make fun of their clients, or we see life beating them down over the course of an episode, they pretty much always get a happy ending by the end of the episode. The show is unusually optimistic for the world of edgy adult animation, which is usually really cynical and nihilistic. You know, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but for my personal taste, that kind of thing just doesn't click. Smiling Friends has all the same dressings as those other shows, but has a more optimistic outlook on life at its core. And I love that. Now, obviously, that's not to say that there's nothing mean-spirited in Smiling Friends. You can't really have a show like this without some of that energy. But it's never the point. That cynicism and nihilistic, nothing really matters vibe is never the show's goal. I mean, just look at the season two finale, Pim finally turns green. Uh, yeah, that's the name of the episode, but that's not what the episode is about at all. <laughs> I told you the show likes to mess with its viewers. But this one's a Christmas special, released in June, uh, cool, where Charlie and Pim accidentally bring a snowman to life. This snowman then immediately enters an intense existential crisis when he learns what the concept of being alive is and how it will eventually end. And the episode that then plays out can kind of feel like one of those more mean-spirited stories, where at every turn, the universe is finding new ways to torture and terrify this snowman with the concept of death. But after he lives six months of a safe but boring life in the Smiling Friends freezer, he decides to live a little and go to the beach in their cooler. Of course, he then gets knocked over into the hot sand and dies, until the water he was made of gets absorbed into the ocean. He gets to continue living, but now instead of being snow, he is the ocean. Meaning this snowman will now live on forever in the most freeing way possible. For one of the more mean-spirited, let's torture this one character for the whole episode kind of stories, the show still brought a truly 
really happy ending to it all. Wow, I just, I love my friends and I love my God and I love my country and, uh, and God bless America, I guess. What else can you say? Don't watch the after credit scene. But yeah, uh, the show still uses those more pessimistic and nihilistic concepts, but usually just as a contrast to give the optimistic outcome of the story a more satisfying payoff. The goal is still optimism, which really just isn't the case with most of the other adult animated shows that I've seen. And of course, the most blatant example of this is the episode Frowning Friends, where a competing company moves in across the street. Two dudes who look like edgelord versions of Charlie and Pim go around telling people that nothing in life matters, saying all their dreams are dumb and insulting the things that they're insecure about. These two characters straight up are the embodiment of the nihilistic, cynical ideas that this show actively works against. And despite literally preaching to a crowd of people about how nothing matters and you shouldn't care about anything because we're all gonna die one day, the literal second this guy's life is threatened, he suddenly cares very much. He drops to his knees, pleading for his life, and pisses himself, just totally giving up the act. Now, I've seen some discourse around this scene online. So let me be clear, I'm not trying to make this more than what it is. I ain't saying this is some masterful act of social commentary or anything like that. You do not have to be fair and have a pretty high IQ to understand frowning friends. But I do think this episode is a perfect little case study for what I mean when I say that smiling friends, despite all of this, is actually a surprisingly optimistic, hopeful, and wholesome show. Jesus Christ. Oh my what God. is that? What is that? I don't know. Alan. 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 Just, you gotta trust me on that. <laughs>